Can everyone hear me okay? All right. Good evening. Happy Earth Day. That was uh, it's a lot to unpack in that movie there. <laughs> a, lot in a lot to unpack in a, an hour and a half. Um, but what I want to chat with you all about tonight, and I promise I'm not going to take too long, um, is really about um, environmentalism. And really, I think the key um, that I'd like to talk about tonight is Yes, the environment is important to protect. That's why I'm here. That's why we've devoted, I've devoted my life to it. Um, but it's ultimately, it's about people. And of course, that's a pun on uh, Soylent Green is people. Um, being green is about people. Um, so hopefully you'll bear with me in my, my terrible puns here. Okay. So, um, what I'd like to do today is chat with you a little bit about um, what we're doing at Ursinus and also um, talk a little bit about um, why people are so important in the environment. Um, I do have a couple figures um, for us to chat about uh, so we can kind of frame our, our discussion. Um, so like we saw in the movie, um, we saw a society that something had happened. Uh, resources were depleted, um, resources were scarce, and um, we saw there was a lot. We saw inequities. Um, and just for something to think about, um, if everyone on Earth, uh, with our population of about um, seven to eight billion people, if everyone on Earth lived an average American lifestyle, um, we would need about five, five Earths of resources for everyone to maintain our lifestyle. Now, I'm not here to say we should be living one way or another. Um, I certainly gr drove a car to get here to spend this fine evening with all of you. Um, but let's think about that and um, some of the things that we all do in our daily lives and things that we can think about differently. One other piece of research that I want to share with you before we really begin our discussion and, and talk about things is research shows that people are twice as likely to adopt environmentally friendly practices if two conditions are met. One is if we can prove to them that their actions make a difference, and then second, that others are doing their part too. So if we can do those two things, um, then people are twice as likely to adopt some sort of environmentally friendly practice. So my goal at the end of the evening is to show you, hopefully, that your actions um, are important and that others are doing their part as well. Um, I'll let you tell me if I've convinced you or not, but I feel like after all of that in the movie, we need some good news. <laughs> Things are a little bleak out there, a uh, lot to unpack in the movie, so I just want to talk a little bit about some of the things that people are doing um, and what we do at Ursinus um, with environmental studies and sustainability. So, sustainability, all right? What exactly is it? How is it different from environmentalism or environmentally friendly practices? So, whereas environmentalism is we need to protect the earth because the earth is vitally important and has intrinsic values, sustainability tends to be a bit more selfish <laughs> in a way. Um, we tend to look at it as let's protect our natural resources for ourselves and future generations so we don't run into an issue that uh, the folks in Soylent Green ran into. How we do that, and as you can see, um, sorry, I'll keep my, my <laughs> projection this way, um, is we try to meet three different values and when we do that, that is when we say, okay, we're acting sustainably. Um, so when we're protecting our natural resources, when we're uh, contributing to a healthy society based upon justice and equality, and then also um, when we're contributing to a vibrant economy. 
that's when all three of those values or what I call pillars are called being sustainable, okay? So I'm sure we can think about instances where something's been economically feasible and then environmentally friendly. So changing light bulbs to LEDs, okay? That can save us money on our energy bills and then also help the environment because we're not using as much energy. I would also add, let's include a, a just society. So um, in how we look at where we're buying our materials from um, would make that practice truly sustainable. All right. So at Ursinus College, um, what I do is I actually manage the sustainability department. And one thing that I do is I, um, provide resources for students. And that's really my, my main duty at Ursinus College is to be support and provide structure for students who want to do projects that are environmentally friendly or sustainable. And they are out there, definitely. Um, one thing that we do is we are a carbon um, commitment college, meaning that we have made a commitment to go carbon neutral uh, by 2060. So it does sound like a long time away, but we're actively tracking and measuring how, many car how much carbon emissions we are putting out into the environment. And we have made a commitment to go carbon neutral. Another thing that we do is we have a small um, two acre farm. Um, it's actually a little less than two acres, but we have a natural or I'm sorry, a, a native bee colony and also a European uh, honey bee colony there as well uh, that we help manage and that's all help with pollinators. This is all student run and managed. We also have a little bit of fun. That was a, a photo from a bee banquet, uh, which is basically a student showed off what kind of food would be available if we didn't have pollinators. Uh, we had water and stale pasta. So that was basically all the food that was, that was available to us um, without pollinators. So not a too far distant uh, <laughs> reach from us, the diet in Soylent Green there. Here's a picture of the, the organic farm. We're managed on organic practices. Uh, we do not use synthetic fertilizers or pesticides on that farm. It's located on 9th Avenue in Collegeville. Uh, if you blink, you will miss it. <laughs> it's tiny. Uh, there's our students working on our community plots. And there's a location of the farm and there's some of the food that we produce there. So the food that we produce at the organic farm goes into the cafeteria at Ursinus College. If the cafeteria, it tells us too many cucumbers, we're done. We can't take as much cucumbers because as you know, if you have a garden, when food comes in, it comes in. Um, then we donate the extra food over to food pantries as well. Uh, this farm is, again, completely 100% student managed. I am there to provide support and um, a mentorship for the students, but these are 18 to 22 year olds that are interested in doing something, interested in learning, researching organic farming practices. They may go on to graduate school or even become farmers themselves. We have a bike share program at Ursinus trying to reduce our dependency on cars. We have a sustainable move out program. I'll chat about that in a little bit. And we are always trying to get students to rethink their practices, uh, whether they're leaving lights on in the dorms and all of those things. And this is also my uh, stab at let's be energy, conserve our energy, but also let's prepare students for the quote unquote real world when they have to pay energy bills. Um, I send them mock bills <laughs> on, hey, this is what your energy usage was for this past month. This is how much it would cost you uh, if you were renting an apartment or buying a house. So it's uh, serving dual purposes there. 
Recycling, not gonna talk too much about recycling now, but if anyone has questions about recycling, I'm more than happy to chat about it. We do recycle at our sinus. If you've been following the news, reading New York Times, you've been hearing some tough things happening in the world of recycling. Um, hang in there. It's, it's, I think we can come through this. I don't think recycling is dead. Um, but we're going to have to get innovative and create, um, I think, uh, an industry and uh, an economy for it here and as well elsewhere. We can chat more about it. So transportation chatted about that. We try to heavily rely on um, uh, SEPTA, the regional rail bus lines at our Sinus College. Um, our first year students, we don't allow them to bring a car to campus unless they have um, a reason to, whether they're commuting or, or not, or they have some sort of um, excused reason to, to have a, a vehicle on campus there. All right, sustainable move out. So colleges, if any of you have college age students or remember back to when you went to college yourself, you need a lot of things. You have a mini fridge, you have a microwave, you have all of these clothes. Not everything that you bring to college fits back in the car when you're trying to move out. Um, so that's where students are making a lot of tough decisions in that they are trying to decide, do I keep this mini fridge, which they should keep, or do I just leave it and put it in the dumpster. Uh, what my office does is we say, no, don't put it in the dumpster. There are people that need that mini fridge, people on campus that needs that mini fridge, and then there's local charities that need that mini fridge as well. Um, and this goes uh, in, in terms of clothes, this goes for books, this goes for dorm de decorations, things that students have acquired over a year of their lives, and they're having to make that tough decision of, okay, how do I get this home, uh, or this sweater doesn't fit me anymore. Um, yes, they should be a little more thought out in how they're making those practices, but they're not quite getting there at that age, and they're you know, thinking about final exams, uh, feeling a lot of pressure and some tough decisions are made. So what we do is we host a sustainable move out where we host a free market for students to come drop off things or pick up things. Um, and then anything that is not taken by the end of the week, when students have left the campus, we source it out to local charities in Philadelphia um, and New in New Jersey. So, Last but not least, so I've talked to you about what Ursina students do. Again, all of those projects were student managed and overseen by students who have an interest in the environment and sustainability. But really, I wanna um, go over a few things, and this is really my, my last slide before if there's any questions, I'm happy to chat. But what can we all do, okay? So you've seen Ursina students, but what can we do? There are tons of things that we can do to avoid that cataclysmic environment that uh, Soylent Green showed us. I really, I've been saying this for about 10 years now and I still stand behind it. The best thing to do for the environment is to simply plant a tree. Uh, it is relatively low cost. Uh, what it does is it helps with our carbon dioxide in the environment. It helps with uh, purification of our water in the ground. It helps reduce stormwater pollution. It does so many different things that just in terms of the least amount of money input versus what we get back is planting a tree. Um, we may not see the benefits of planting that tree, but our children will uh, 20 years from when we plant it. If you don't own property where you feel like I cannot plant a tree here, there are many organizations involved in the community that do um, annual tree plantings. One of them is the Perkiomen Watershed, which is not that far away from here. Um, turn back air conditioning and heat. Just doing so one degree will make a huge difference on not only your energy bill or uh, 
but also the, the carbon emissions that are associated with that. It may mean that we're a little warmer in the summer and a little cooler in the, in the winter, but one degree makes a huge, huge difference. While we're chatting about energy, it is possible in Pennsylvania to purchase renewable energy. Uh, so you don't necessarily make, need to make the investment in saying, okay, I'm gonna put solar panels on my house or I'm gonna build a windmill. You can source out where your energy is coming from and you can purchase renewable energy and your energy supplier can direct it to your home, okay? That's showing a message that, hey, energy supplier, I'm interested in this. Um, and then be introspective and ask yourself some hard questions. This is something that I always talk about with the students. So, you know, we all have um, things in our lives, you know, and questions of do we need this or do I want this? Um, that's all for you to decide and make those, those answers. In the community, I really do think uh, we need to kind of go back to the golden rule of be kind to yourself. Definitely, I think we need to be more kind to ourselves and to others. Um, look into joining a local community group buy local when you can, all right, to support that local economy. And then also your legislators. Not only write letters to them, but see if they will meet with you to discuss about something that, you're imp that you feel important, that you feel is important, pardon me. Um, that way they know who you are. They know that you are a constituent and you're active in the community. Um, take some time, but it's a well worth the dialogue. And last but not least, I will lead, end with my uh, contact information. Oh, sorry about that. I will end with my contact information and happy to answer any questions if there are, but I know it's getting late on a Monday night, so um, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> any questions? Yes, in the back. Yeah, uh, what about electric? Cars. I was thinking about buying an electric car. How does that fit into the equation, and would that help matters? In your sure. Opinion? So, let's see. I'm trying to go mobile here. Um, so the question was about electric cars, and would that necessarily help? How does that fit into the equation? What was your question? Um, so I do think that um, electric cars are being marketed as more affordable. Um, there is a little bit of a gap in the way we fuel them, um, meaning there's a gas station almost on every corner, sometimes two on every corner, um, whereas ports to charge the electric car, they are becoming way more common than they were just two years ago. Um, so I do think that is a way to become less dependent on fossil fuel for our car energy. Um, but then when we're thinking about, okay, when we plug that car in, um, where is that energy being generated? So it's, it can become overwhelming, um, but it is, I think, something that if it's important to you, just like hybrids, you know, hybrids are in the middle of electric and gas. Um, I think it's about sending a message that this is important as a consumer. So it, I think it, it's up to you, and I hate to be so vague like that, but it is up to you. I understand your point about the availability, but uh, I have seen more of them like Wild Wilds are putting them in now and the charging stations, so. Definitely, definitely. I do think they will become more, more common as well. And it comes from demand. People are saying these are becoming more affordable. And yes, I would like this at my hotel, at my Wawa. Yes, very good question. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so the question was, what is the most com what is a, a common everyday thing someone can do to help the environment? So besides planting that tree, which I still say is number one, 
um, our plastic dependency, uh, reducing that single-use plastic, okay? And again, this has to come to, to what works with your life, okay? Um, investing in a reusable grocery bag and you actually using it. And that's how many times do I forget? They're in my trunk, you know? Um, investing in that reusable water bottle. Um, trying to think through how do I avoid that single-use plastic for sandwiches. Um, trying to rethink that. Plastic has done a lot of good in society. Revolutionized medical society and healthcare, um, but our single-use plastics is really starting to show detrimental effects to uh, sea life, um, basically beaches, what the beaches are now composed of. We're finding they're made of microplastics. Um, so really some concerning things coming out of these single-use plastics. So I would say, other than trees, trying to think through plastics. Um, and start, start small. It doesn't, you know, by all means, you don't have to go home and throw all the plastic away or recycle all the plastic right now. Start small, find something that works well for you, and then go from there. Great question. Don't let me off this easy. <laughs> What's that? Oh, I actually, I just have one, just one. <laughs> All right, with that, um, I'll be available for a couple minutes here um, if you want to chat with me privately. But thank you so much for coming out on Earth Day, everyone, and enjoy your evening. <laughs> <laughs>